In this lesson, we will learn about the dial plan hierarchy and digit manipulation. The traditional approach to dial plan hierarchy configuration refers to performing digit manipulation in the route list details. CUCM version 7 and version 8 allow digit manipulation to be configured using global transformation patterns. In this lesson, we're looking at the dial plan hierarchy to help understand how it works. This is from our lab network. In our labs, Pod 1 is Toronto and Pod 2 is New York City. Here we have an example of an extension 11001. The local 10 digit phone number for this number is 416-681-1001. The last five digits of the 10 digit phone number is the extension number. Similarly, in New York we have 12002. The actual 10 digit local phone number for that number is 212-761-2002. Again, we're looking at the last five digits of the 10 digit number as your extension number. Let's have a look at an example of how I'd do some dialing. If I was calling from this number here, I would simply dial 12002 and I would get an inter-office call. But if someone's calling you from a local phone, they would have to dial 212-761-2002 if they're calling you through the PSTN. So how does the dial plan hierarchy work? We have route patterns that we already talked about that point to a route list, that points to a route group, that points to a device which can be a gateway or a trunk. When you're configuring this, you actually do it from right to left. You put in your device, you build up your route group, you build out a route list, and then you put in your route pattern. Looking at things from the Toronto perspective, we have three separate things. We have our SIP trunk, which I'm going to call SIP to New York City, and then we have PRI1 and PRI2. Calling from this cluster to this cluster over the SIP trunk is completely different than calling through either one of these PRIs to the local PSTN. However, PRI1 and PRI2, the dialing is exactly the same. We have 46 channels, which we can make 46 calls through the exact same way. So we're going to build a route group for our SIP to New York City trunk, and we're simply going to call it SIP to New York City route group. We also need to build a route group for these two PRIs. Since both of these PRIs go to the Toronto PSTN, we're going to call it the Toronto PSTN route group. I'm going to include both of these PRIs in the route group because the dialing is the same. We can simply circle around and choose the channel that we're going to use. So we're going to build a route list for calls to New York City and we're going to call it the New York City route list. We want our first choice for calls to New York to go over the SIP trunk through the data network. But if the data network is down, then we want those calls to be routed through the PRIs to the PSTN. We're going to need a pattern for this. We're going to start with one, two, and you got it. X, X, X. So let's imagine I make a call to 12001 from Toronto. I dial 12001 and I match the pattern in my call manager. The call manager says, that's the New York City route list. We want to send that through our first choice, our SIP trunk. So we send those digits over to the call manager in New York City. He gets 12001 and says, hey, that's that phone and uses Skinny to make that phone ring. The phone call is picked up here, connects back to Toronto, and all that voice traffic is sent VoIP across the WAN. So what happens when the WAN fails? I go to this phone here and I call over to New York, 12001. The call manager says, use the SIP trunk, that's my first choice. So we send that call to the WAN, but the WAN is down. The call manager is gonna go to our second choice. So, we're going to send 12001 out the PRI to the PSTN. But what happens when my call gets to the PSTN? The PSTN doesn't recognize 12001 as a phone number. So we're going to fix that in our dial plan hierarchy by using digit manipulation. Digit manipulation is something else we can do in the dial plan hierarchy. We use digit manipulation to change the number. There are two numbers we're going to change. We're going to change the called party number and we're going to change the calling party number. Let's have a look at the called party number first. 
Now we know we dialed 12001 and in our example the WAN has failed. Now the call manager is going to send that out to the PSTN route group. But we also know that when 12001 gets to the PSTN it's unrecognizable. So we're going to have to change that here in our route list before it gets to the PSTN. And we're going to do that using a prefix. We're going to prefix that with 121276. When we add 121276 to 12001, we have an 11 digit phone number, and the PSTN recognizes that as a long distance number, and it comes out to this PRI3 right here. PRI is different in different places, so we're not always sure exactly what digits are going to be sent. I sent 12127612001 out through this PRI. Most often, this PRI is going to receive 212761201. Now, this call manager is looking after this PRI using MGCP. So it's this call manager that's going to receive a 10-digit number. Are we looking for a 10-digit number? No, we're looking for a 5-digit extension. So what are we going to do so that the call manager only gets the last 5 digits? We're going to configure something called significant digits, and we're going to say we only want to look at the last 5 digits. When that's configured in the call manager, we'll get rid of the prefix, we'll get 12001 sent to the call manager and our call will be routed to this telephone here. Going back to our call manager in Toronto, there's another way we can use digit manipulation to change our called party number. What we can do is we can add a mask. The mask we'll put in is 121276XXXXX. Each one of those X's stands for one of the digits in our extension numbers. So if I dial 12001 and my call goes through the PSTN, we'll apply the mask 121276 and my number 12001 will be substituted in. We can apply that mask right here in the call manager so that the call can be routed out through the PSTN. Let's have a look at the calling party number. When we're changing the calling party number, we do something a little bit differently. We go into the call manager here and we use a drop down box that says use calling party's external phone number mask. When we configured each one of our lines, we added an external phone number mask of 41668XXXXX. So what happens is, when I call from my five digit extension, and my call ends up going through the PSTN, we add that mask right here, and we have a 10 digit number that goes through to our New York office. We can also do something here in the call manager. We can type in prefix one. So that way, when the call goes to our New York office, we get a long distance number of 1416681. 002, and they can simply return that call. Remember we configured those patterns 911, 9911-92-911, and so on? Well, we want to route those calls, so we're going to point them to the Toronto PSTN route list. This route list is also going to go through the Toronto PSTN route group. Now for digit manipulation here, we're going to go to the discard digits drop-down box and we're going to choose discard pre-dot. That way, when we make a call from this phone, we match a pattern here, it comes through this route list, and before it's routed through the PSTN, we discard the 9.